According to Jungian psychology, in most of the case, the person you are attracted to actually says a lot of things about you. Sometimes we even fall in love with someone on our first meeting and in some cases we even start to fantasize and daydream about them going on with adventures with them others feel like we are mad but for us it is very real but the thing is in most cases we barely know anything about them According to analytical psychology in every man's psyche there is a woman and in every woman's psyche there is a man if we are unconscious about this aspect first of all we project them into other people well, that's still okay but if we are unconscious about this aspect of our psyche it have a negative aspect too which can make us dull moody depressed feeling like a void deep inside ourselves this sucks the life out of us like a vampire and even lure us into taking our own life but if we make this element of our psyche conscious they act as a inner partner inside us which basically help us to attain psychological and spiritual wholeness which is the ultimate purpose of our life now let's try to learn about this inner woman inside a man and the inner man inside a woman anima is a woman inside a man's psyche all the feminine psychological tendencies in a man first let's look at the dangerous and negative aspects of anima now mainly it's shaped by the influence of a man's mother on him whether it's positive or negative like if a man feels like his mother had a negative influence on him his anima would be like constantly telling him i am nothing nothing makes any sense with others it's different but for me i cannot enjoy anything these anima moods cause a sort of dullness depression insecurity and a fear of disease impotence or accidents the world of life takes on a sad and oppressive aspect such dark moods can even lure a man into suicide in that case anima becomes a death demon now another thing can occur is if a young man is overpowered by his mother he often turns into the realm of intellect and philosophy but without a proper quest what i mean is normally people are interested in philosophy or spirituality because they are in search of some answers for some questions in their life but in the case of this man this philosophical discussions are just a play of words to save his mental masculinity it's like because his mother cannot understand this so at least here he have his power so what happen is he forget to live the real earthly life the real masculinity which is the real vitality of actions which can seize and mold reality which helps a man to have and achieve his passion and thus live a life he want but this man cannot have that because he only lives in the realm of intellect now just like the negative influence of the mother our attachment with the mother can also negatively affect our anima and most cases this mother complex can cause a split anima it's like on one hand he worship feminine image too much and he always want to be under the protective and nourishing circle of his mother parents and family he might be still in his 30s or 40s unable to take life's real responsibility who hasn't really matured properly as a man and he is called a man child or pure eternus On the other hand he despises woman and see her just as an object to fulfill his sexual fantasies now both these aspects can be projected on a woman and this cause a man to suddenly fall in love with a woman when he see her for the first time now anima is not just about lust and moodiness and all anima is the archetype of life which guides the man to the profound depth of his psyche These are the stages in the development of anima. The first stage is indistinguishable from the personal mother. The second stage personifies the romantic and the sexual elements. The third stage manifests religious and spiritual devotion. And the fourth stage is a guide to inner life and wisdom, mediating to consciousness, the unconscious contents. Now before learning how to integrate our anima to our consciousness, let's learn about animus. Animus is a man inside a woman's psyche. All the masculine psychological tendencies in a woman. 
first let's look at the negative aspects of the animus now a animus is shaped by the influence of a woman's father on her the father endows his daughter's animus with incontestable and inarguable true conviction which was never included in the personal reality of the woman herself as she is for example she might be a very friendly and agreeable person but when she is dominated by her animus no logic in the world can sway her from her convictions she'll be like it's like that that's all now this make a woman to take sometimes wrong decisions in her life if the woman is unconscious to her animus it will lead to a stage of strange passivity and paralysis of all feelings it will be like deep inside her animus is whispering you are hopeless don't try it you are going to fail anyway life will never change for you just like anima in men animus also takes on a vampiric aspect like she has no life in herself so she sucks life from others a woman possessed by the animus is always in the danger of losing her femininity because at that time of doing her ego identifies with the animus and feels like all these wild thoughts are her own and only after the possession has fallen away she will realize with complete horror what she did and said was completely opposite to her real thoughts and feelings now all these aspects of the animus can be projected on a man and this is what cause a woman to suddenly fall in love with a man when she see him for the first time or also cause unrealistic expectations from a relationship now anima is not just about this recklessness and evil ideas he can become the incarnation of spiritual wisdom in a woman if a woman makes her animus conscious he becomes her inner companion he can endow the woman with qualities such as initiativeness courage objectivity and most importantly spiritual wisdom these are the four stages of development of animus first he appears as the embodiment of physical power a masculine man then in the second stage he is possessed with initiative and capacity for planned action in third stage he appears as a clergy man or a professor in the fourth stage animus becomes the incarnation of spiritual meaning where he mediates a woman's conscious mind with unconscious now integrating anima in a man and animus in a woman is almost same principle it can be done through dream work where we amplify and interpret our dreams and integrate unconscious elements into our consciousness and a method called active imagination which is a method of becoming conscious of our fantasies by using which we can become familiar with the nature of our anima and animus by personifying your anima or animus as an autonomous personality asking him or her questions and attending response we can do it by expressing it in a creative way like painting writing dancing working on a clay or stone whatever you feel like this will help us in the process of individuation becoming whole becoming what we are meant to be the ultimate purpose of our life now learning this is not an easy task and it will take a lot of practice and discipline i have been working on a video about dream work but honestly it's quite hard to explain everything about dream work in a video and i am slightly lazy to edit long videos but i will try my best to finish it as soon as possible that's it see you in the next video